Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to understanding Docker for Windows video series. And in this video, we're talking about making Windows container for Docker to work. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part three since this part is gonna be a complete continuation of that part. All right, let's get started. So before we get started, let's do a quick recap of what we talked so far because those are the foundation videos for this particular video. So we talked about in an introduction to Docker and Docker for Windows, and we also did the installation for Docker for Windows Beta, right, on the Windows 10 machine. And then we discussed about getting up to the speed with the Docker on the Linux kernel. So I'm saying Linux kernel, remember we saw this before, something like this, the Docker info, right? And that showed us the operating system like Alpine Linux version 3.4 and the OS type was Linux, right? So that's what we discussed before. But we are going to talk about Windows containers and Dockers, right? So will the Linux kernel will run the Windows image as well as like the Alpine Linux we did before by pulling the Alpine Linux from the hub.docker.com and we just executed? Well, a very good question. But the answer is no. We need to tell Docker explicitly to switch to the Windows version of containers. And this we can do using the option shown below. And you can see that this is the option which is not available in the a general available Docker for Windows download. Rather, the beta version of the Docker for Windows has this option, switch to Windows container, right? So if you click this particular option, you will be switched to the Windows container, rather the currently running Linux container. So by default, if you install the Docker, it will run the Linux containers out of the box. But if you need your Docker to run the Windows container, then you need to switch to the Windows container using this option to perform the operation. So what's really happening behind the scene? So behind the scene, the Docker engine will enable the containers feature of the Windows 10 as well. As you can see here in the Windows features on and off. You can see there is a containers option highlighted. This particular option will be enabled as well along with the switching of Windows container. So this is really happening there behind the scene. And once done, we can pull the image from the Docker Hub as usual. But if you don't switch to the Windows container, then you will see an error message as shown here. So if you do a Docker pull Microsoft slash nano server, then you'll be getting a message saying pulling the FS layer and then suddenly it will tell you that it's unknown blob because this particular blob or the big large object is not something which is being supported by the Linux kernel, right? Which is the out of the box kernel available on the Docker. So you need to switch. Unless until you switch, this particular option is not gonna work, right? So let's see this in action to understand everything whatever we have discussed this in slide. So for that, I'm gonna to flip to PowerShell. So until our last video, we just discussed the basic commands on the Docker by running these commands, right? So right now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna clear the screen and let's do this. Let's do a Docker pull. The one which I was talking about, the Microsoft Nano Server, something like that. So we can actually do that. So let me quickly go to the hub.docker.com and let's search for Microsoft. So this will bring all the images which is rated or released by Microsoft. And this is something which is like Microsoft. And you can see the one which I'm interested in right now is the Microsoft, hmm, I don't find that in the first page, but let's see if I get the nano servers. There is a SQL server the next. Yeah, there is a nano server here. This is what I'm interested in. But this Windows Server Core is also something very, very interesting. We need to do that. But right now, let's go to the Nano Server because this is like a stripped down version of the operating system by Windows. So it's just a core image of the server. And uh, we can just pull that for now because the size is like, I guess it's 800 max. So I'm just gonna copy that. And I'm gonna come here and let's try to run this. And now if I run this, you'll see the message that we saw in those light will get that particular message. It's try to pull the FS layer and it will tell you that there's an unknown blog because currently we have not switched our Docker to a Windows container. So if you want to do that, you need to go in here 
right click the VL symbol and there's an option here switch to Windows container so only if you click this it will tell you that docker is switching and this may take some time so it's gonna switch your docker to the Windows container support and now we'll get a message here saying the containers feature is not enabled. So do you want to enable it for the Docker to be able to work it properly? So your computer will restart automatically. So the one which we signed on our slide, right? It is really going to enable the containers uh, feature. So I'm going to hit OK. And once you do this, this is going to restart your machine as well because this is a new feature which is going to be added into your machine. Right now it's restarting our machine. I guess it's gonna take a while so once everything is done I'll be back all right my machine rebooted and the docker is right now running as you can see here and let's go here the docker is running right now so if I right click this time hmm it says still switch to Windows container I'm not sure since it's a beta version whether it is really behaving as expected or not I'm not sure so let's quickly see the docker info whether the Linux kernel is still available here for the OS type. Oh yeah, still it is in the Linux kernel. I don't know what's really happening. So let me again switch to Windows container because it's in beta. I don't know whether it's really behaving as expected, but it should work fine because I have already worked with that. All right, so now how about it? Yay, there we go. Now we have a switch to Linux kernel this time. So not the Windows kernel. So once again, I'm going to do a Docker info. There we go. So now you can see that this time the information has changed a lot. You can see that the storage driver is a Windows filter. Whereas before the storage driver was a overlay 2. But right now it is a Windows filter. And we have a networking as a L2 bridge. All those things are pretty much same. But the default isolation is Hyper-V. Again, the isolation is something which we'll be talking in much greater detail while we start working with the Windows Server containers. But as of now, just be informed that this isolation is very, very important because you can switch this flag in the Windows Server container as hyphen hyphen isolation is equal to Hyper-V to make your containers run in a Hyper-V version as well in the server, not just the out of the box feature but also as an Hyper-V and again this is something which we'll be discussing in more detail once we start working with the Windows Server container but as of now just be informed that there is something called as default isolation is called a Hyper-V and this is defaulted here because this is a Windows 10 machine right so right now we have switched from the Linux container to Windows container this time cool and now let me just do a CLS and if you try to pull the image this time, the same thing that we did before, the Docker pull Microsoft, if I don't forget it, nano server, right? So this is going to pull the nano server build of the core image. So this is going to take a while for my machine. So I'll be back once the complete downloading is done. All right, so now the image has been downloaded here. So let's quickly see how it looks like. So for that, I'm just going to do a Docker, Docker images. And you can see right now we have a image, Microsoft Nano Server, right? Which is great. And you can see that the size is 873, 75 MB. And now if we try to run this particular Docker image, as pretty much same as how we do for the Linux containers. It's pretty much the same. So in order to spin up this image as a container, you need to do this. Docker run hyphen D as a detach mode, or maybe we can just do IT for interactive mode. And then we can just do a Microsoft nano server. And then if we want to do a command execution in here, we can just do a command prompt and if we just hit enter so in Linux world we had something called SSH or shell scripting or shell or something like a bash for Ubuntu but here for Windows we know that we have a command so once we run this it is going to run a command prompt so let's let's see it's going to take a while because it's running actually in a hyper-v for the first time 
So let's also open the task manager and I will show you what's really happening behind the scene. Hmm. Okay. It's getting slow. There we go. We now are invited to a black screen, which is nothing but the command prompt. And you can see there are some other things running in here. We have a com.docker.db. And the one which I'm interested in is this the Hyper V compute host compute service. And we will have something like a virtual machine worker process, right? So these worker processes are actually the worker processes for this particular image, which is actually running or the container, which is actually running. And let's see what is really inside this particular directory. If I do a DIR, you can see that it will actually have a program file and there is a license text and there's a user, a Windows, all those things. This is actually coming from the container. It is not my machine. If you want to see this, if you want to show what is this inside in my machine, I don't really have a file name license.txt in my C colon, right? It's pretty much empty in here. But you can see that it has license.txt, all those things. And now let me try to exit this particular. And if I go to the PowerShell, and now if I try to do a docker ps hyphen a, you can see that the Microsoft Nano server was actually running this particular image, this container ID, and it exited something like this, right? So it is not running anymore. But now what if I do this? What if I try to run this particular docker in an interactive mode, once again, Microsoft, nano server of cmd and you can see that this time it is going to run a little faster than before because it is actually pulling the particular saved state than the actually creating a new container altogether again those are those are something which we'll be discussing later in this particular course don't worry about it but right now let's quickly see what's really happening behind the scene you can see that it is created 25 seconds ago and it is up and running right now, right? So this particular image is currently running and you can see the complete detail in here, right? So you, you can stop it and you can start it once again and you can do a lot of things. And let's see if I open one more PowerShell over here and let's do this. Docker PS, oops, Docker run. This time I'm going to run this particular image to output some of the information to me, something like an echo command, right? So I'm just going to do an IT and I'm just going to say Microsoft slash nano server and I'm going to say command echo execute automation, something like this. And if I run this, it will just echo me exit automation with this three exclamation symbol out there. And it's also going to exit there we go hmm sorry and i should also do in slash c let's see what's going to be really happening because it's not going to really output the information for me on the screen there we go now we have the exit automation in here right and it, you can see that it printed the value and it and also exited so now if i go to the powershell if i see the process being running in here you can see that it executed and within 28 seconds it just exited right so you can actually see with the full list I guess there we go hmm even the full list is not really displaying all the values though all right so the the whole idea is here is to show that you can actually run this particular container almost like you're just running a command prompt but behind the scene, all these containers are actually an independent machine right now. They are not the same containers, but they are completely independent containers. And you can see that each container has a container ID in here. And you can also specify the name of the particular uh, image while you run. But you can see that these are completely different altogether. These are the container IDs. And these are completely independent right now. And these are altogether a different machines and you don't actually see that particular machine even in our Hyper-V. So all these are happening behind the scene in just one single operation. You just do this docker run interactive or detach or 
RMI or something like that, and it runs without any problem. So this is really, really cool. So this is how everything is working in Docker for Windows World. In our next video of this particular series, we will discuss more about the Hyper-V container. So stay tuned guys, once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.